Hello and welcome to another maths video. Uh, in this video we're going to look at square roots and in the title of the video we've got the square root of 36 is equal to, is it 6? Or is it plus or minus 6? Uh, this has caused quite a bit of um, controversy on social media. Um, so I want to explain what it is, um, but I really want to use this kind of viral maths problem as an introduction to the concept of functions, which we are going to look at in uh, GCSE Mathematics right at the very end of GCSE Mathematics. Um, it's where school or high school or whatever leaves off and further education college starts or where your fifth form ends and your sixth form begins. Uh, so we're just introducing the concept, we're not taking it much further um, because the, the further concepts happen in pre-calculus which is dealt with at A level um, but we're just introducing the concept of functions here. But let's have a look at this viral maths problem and let's have a look at it on three different levels. Okay, in level one, we can look at this function and we can say, well, this is just a button we can press on our calculator. Um, and if we get our calculator, we type 36 and we press the square root button and it says 6 and it's as simple as that we might uh, if we if we take it just a, a little bit further we might think that hang on we have this x squared button and if we take 6 and then we plus press the x squared button that will come to 36 like that and then if we press the square root button we get back to 6 and we might realize that whatever number we type in let's just pick 23 and we press the squared button and then if we press the square root button we get back to the original. So we might even think in terms of the square root of x squared brings us back to the original number x. Okay, at this level if we've learned a little bit more maths uh, and we're know a little bit more about how the number line works we can think in terms of negative numbers and we can think we have one two three four five six and we have minus one minus two minus three minus four minus five minus six and we can realize that when we multiply a negative multiplied by a negative we get a positive so negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to 1 and negative 2 times negative 2 is equal to 4 negative 3 times negative 3 is equal to 9 and so on uh, negative 6 times negative 6 is equal to 36 ah but we said the square root of 36 is 6 so if we've got negative 6 let me just create some space here so if we've got negative 6 and we square that we get 36 but if we square root 36 we just get 6 
that makes no sense. In order to be consistent, we need to say the square root of 36 is equal to 6 or negative 6. And this makes a lot of sense because when we are doing quadratic equations and stuff, we can think of x squared is equal to 36. What are the solutions? Well, we're told that if we take the 36 over to the left-hand side, it becomes a, min a negative, and then that, we can solve that by factoring x minus 6, x plus 6, using the difference of two squares. And that's equal um, to 0. So either x equals 6 or x equals negative 6. So knowing all this, we can become absolutely convinced in our mind that the square root of 36 is equal to plus or minus 6. So when we were at like level one and we were just using the calculator and we were just saying oh yeah you know six times six is 36 therefore the square root of 36 is six we were convinced we were right back then but now we know about negative numbers and a negative times a negative is a positive uh, and now we're absolutely convinced that the square root of 36 is either six or negative six Okay, now at this level we get to learn a little bit more and I'm actually going to introduce the concept of functions. So we can think of x squared as a function and we can think of the square root of x as a function. And when we talk about something as a function we can often use the notation f of x is equal to Now, at GCSE level, you might often see functions introduced in the form of a magic box. And they might show that you have an input and an output. And they might say that this magic box is, let's say, 2x plus 1. And let's say uh, 3 goes in. So we take the 3, we multiply it by 2, and it becomes 6, and we add 1, and it becomes 7, and 7 is our output. Now, by using this method of teaching what, introducing the concept of functions, uh, this input here is actually called the domain of the function. The function we refer to as f of x, and the range is all the possible outputs. Okay, I'm going to try and introduce this concept of functions in a little bit more detail now. And I'm going to introduce the concept of um, some sets. So this curly bracket here is known as a brace. And we can have another brace. And we can put anything we like in the brace. The important thing is we can put anything. Um, and anything can even include nothing. So if we have nothing in the set, it's called a null set. There's nothing in there. Oh, let's stick a few things in this set. Let's say car, rain, and we'll put a number in there, let's say 6, um, and let's say um, finger. No, let, let's do a verb, because it doesn't have to be a noun. It can be absolutely anything. Let's say jump. There we go. 
All right, so this is a set. So these things in here, each of these things in this set, and you can have as many things as you like, including nothing. And these are called elements of the set. Uh, we could actually use this phrase here. You might see this. It means an element of a set. Uh, and we can usually give it a capital letter or whatever as a title. But you can give it any title you like. Uh, so I'm saying that set A, so whenever we see a capital A, we're referring to the set of car, rain, six and jump. And this is an this is not an ordered set. It's just things in this set and let's create another set and I'm going to call it set B and I'm going to just do one two three because I feel like it and I don't want to be imaginative okay uh, because these are numbers and they they're in an order we can call that an ordered set we can create a relationship between them by linking and we can link in any order we like. There we go. Um, so when we draw this link we can say the element 1 in set B maps to element car of set A and element 2 of set B maps to element car of set uh, A and element 3 in set B maps to element jump in set A. That's what this means. Um, by creating these lines, and we don't have to map everything, but by creating these, what we have created is a relationship. So there is now a relationship between set A and set B. And it can be anything there's no rules in that relationship so long as at least one element of set b links uh, is mapped to at least one element of set a then there's a relationship between b and a now it is possible to map the same element of set b onto another element of set a like for example two could be mapped to both car and rain. There's no reason we can't do that. That's perfectly fine in a relationship. Now, if we have just one element from set B mapping onto one element in set A, it doesn't matter if several elements map to the same element, but so long as there is just one element in set B mapping onto one element in set A. In other words, that is acceptable, but this is not acceptable. In this case, one element in set B is mapped onto two elements of set A. That's not acceptable. If you do have only one element in set A, uh, sorry, one element, element in set B mapping onto element of set B, then this is a special kind of relationship, and we call that relationship a function. So that is what's meant when we have this box, which is a function, and we, we can call the box f of x. So we have our input and we have our output. So our input would be set A and our output would be set B. And if we remember set A, oh sorry, no, 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 it's the other way around. You come over here and you come over here, right? So we're mapping set B onto set A. That's what we're doing. So set B is our input and set A is our output. And if we remember, we said that the input was the domain of the function. And this was the output.
which is the range. So a relationship is said to be a function if and only if there is a mapping of one element from the domain to one element on the range. That means that for every unique input there is a unique output. You can have the same output for different inputs but you can't have two or more outputs for any one input. That is a function. So at this level when we're dealing with the problem of what is the square root of 36 it can't be plus or minus 6 because then we would have one input and two outputs and that is not a function. So by convention we say that only one root is taken into account so the square root of 36 is equal to 6 and not and I stress not negative 6 but what if we want the negative root well that's simple we just put a negative sign in front of the square root and now we know we're looking for the negative root and that is negative 6. So negative the square root of 36 is 6 and not positive 6. And I apologise if you can hear some strange sounds in the background. That, that is my cat. I, I am sorry. Right. create a little bit more space but what if we want both roots well we can't because it's a function but what we can say is plus or minus the square root of 36 is equal to plus or minus 6 and if you bear with me I need to go to see to my cat okay catastrophe has been averted Right, so where was I? Oh right, so just to recap, the square root of 36 is equal to 6 and not negative 6, minus or negative square root of 36 is equal to negative 6 and plus or minus the square root of 36 is equal to plus 6 or minus 6. This is why the famous quadratic equation or the qu famous quadratic formula has this. This is why this appears in front of the square root sign which we call a radical. Uh, the square, this plus or minus sign occurs so that we know we need to take both roots because if this wasn't here we would only take the one root. If that was just minus b plus the square root that would only give one root. So we, if we had x, um, let's do a, let's do um, uh, ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught. Uh, we can say x is equal to minus b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a or x equals minus b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and we can combine both 
using that function, using that formula. Okay, so just to recap, a function is like a magic box where you take an input and we call the input the domain and we call the output the range. So when we look at the square root function the domain is all valid inputs. Uh, now if you think about it across um, all the real numbers, all the numbers on the real number line, any negative number times a negative number is going to be positive. So if we have a square root of a negative number, well that's impossible, at least on the real number line, and we're not going to talk about complex numbers in this video, so let's pretend complex numbers don't exist. There are no real numbers that can multiply by itself to get a negative answer. So the domain here is all non-negative numbers. I'm sorry, I'm finding it very difficult to do this video because I've got a cat trying to walk across me. Okay, so if we accept that we can't have a negative number under the square root sign, then we can say that the domain of the square root function is x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. Now as for the range of the square root function, in order to call it a function we have to only have one output, so we choose the positive root, uh, which we call the principal root, and that would be y such that y is greater than or equal to 0. That is to say we will only take 0 or positive numbers underneath the radical and e they will only ever equal a positive number. Uh, this is because we have defined a function to be a relationship where there is only one output for any given input. So at this level, the square root of 36 is indeed 6 and not negative 6. So we were actually right the very first time. Um, but we realised when we said it was 6 and not negative 6, we were wrong. We had to learn a little bit more to introduce the concept of negative numbers. And now we ha we've learned about functions we, we realise it actually is only 6 and not negative 6. OK, I hope this has introduced the concept of functions. In future videos I'm going to come back to functions and we're going to look at um, how we can have um, compound functions and how we can do special things with functions. Um, but our definition of square root now is not the reverse of the squared, so the square root of x squared is in fact the absolute value of x, that is to say just the positive value and not the negative value. Okay, I hope that was helpful and I'll look forward to seeing you in another video uh, where I hope to elaborate a bit more on functions. Uh, see you then, take care, bye bye.